Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. I'm Jamal Arif and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. Today we are going to talk about Container Engine for Kubernetes. It's a level 200 course. So just to do a, a quick uh, safe harbor statement, I'll just uh, give you a minute to just read through the statement itself. So the objectives of this course uh, is to go over our container engine for Kubernetes. Uh, we'll talk about how you can launch a Kubernetes cluster on OCI and also what are the prerequisites of launching a cluster. When you launch the cluster, how you can access that cluster using Kube's kubectl uh, and uh, also the Kubernetes dashboard. Uh, some of like for a prerequisites perspective uh, we just you just need to have a basic understanding of uh, the docker and the docker container runtime uh, and kubernetes uh, so as we go into details on uh, kubernetes components uh, you just need to have a basic understanding of those components all right so moving forward what are some of the ways that you can uh, launch kubernetes cluster on oci so the first step is that it's it's kind of a DIY model where uh, just like any other cloud provider uh, from a core IS perspective, uh, you have the core components of uh, the infrastructure components of uh, Oracle Cloud infrastructure and you can utilize those infrastructure components to set up your own Kubernetes cluster. Uh, basically just using the compute, the networking and the storage services from OCI uh, and then installing your own container runtime which can be docker which can be any, any other container runtime uh, or and then on top of it either launch installing your own orchestration system as well so it can be again docker swarm or it can be kubernetes it can be mesos a bunch of different options are available which ha and all of them are kind of open sourced options that are available to you but we call this method as a DIY method because it's you are uh, just we are just providing you the core infrastructure components uh, from Oracle's uh, OCI perspective. Uh, but from the actual from like running all the container management on top of it is all customer based, so it's all on your end. That's why it's called a DIY model. The second uh, kind of approach can be where instead of uh, creating or installing all of the components uh, yourself. Uh, there is a quick start available on Terraform, uh, with Terraform. Uh, it's uh, currently available on GitHub. It's managed by, uh, by, the, by the Oracle team, uh, but, and, it, and they regularly manage it when your versions are there as well. Uh, but it's a quick start experience. What it does is that it gives you uh, quickly, uh, an, uh, like it quickly creates a Kubernetes cluster on top of OCI uh, and I, in the next slide I'll just talk about that what it actually creates uh, as well but there is a quick start experience that is available as well. From a, uh, from a managed service perspective this is also partly DIY do it yourself because we give you a Terraform to set up the Kubernetes cluster uh, but at the end you are still managing the cluster yourself. The last is what we can call as a container as a service. So uh, this is where our managed Kubernetes service comes into play. We call it uh, or OCI Container Engine for Kubernetes. It's a managed service which allows you to create a Kubernetes cluster within a few minutes. Uh, and from there onwards, the master components are managed by uh, the service itself. Uh, and you are only responsible for your own worker or compute nodes, basically your data plane. And this session uh, primarily and this course primarily will target the last part, which is the uh, which is our managed service, which is the container engine for Kubernetes. So uh, we briefly touched upon the do it yourself uh, uh, method. So the Terraform Kubernetes installer for OCI. So in the Kubernetes installer, uh, it's based on Terraform and it is developed by, uh, by the OCI team uh, and, uh, and it's available on GitHub. The link is available as well. What it does is that it creates a highly available Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so what that means is that as you can see in the figure, uh, it creates multiple master nodes 
uh, in different availability domains so you can uh, choose how many master nodes that you want to configure uh, and also in which availability domains using the terraform script that it is provided it also lets you create uh, worker nodes across uh, different availability domains as well those worker nodes are again can be uh, can be managed in a way that you can choose what kind of worker node shape that you want a compute node shape that you want from the available compute shapes on OCI uh, you can also launch uh, any bare metal node using that uh, com using this uh, Terraform script as well because uh, all you need to do is that you just need to provide the shape in the Terraform uh, variable file the TF variable file and from there onwards it actually creates that cluster for you it also creates uh, all the prerequisites or the infrastructure components. So it creates a virtual cloud network, the subnets, the load balancers, everything is also created with it. And just like we talked earlier, you can specify the number and the shapes of your cluster. It also uh, lets you scale your cluster. So since it's based on Terraform, uh, within the Terraform uh, TF variable file, if you want to scale up the cluster, you can define uh, the total number of the nodes and it would help you scale the cluster as you need however in the previous uh, section where we discussed that DIY model uh, there are a number of different challenges associated while you are managing the Kubernetes cluster yourself uh, and we have talked to a number of different customers and uh, some of the challenges that I have enlisted over here are some of common challenges that the customers face when you are managing the Kubernetes cluster yourself uh, things like how do I how do you uh, find a path where you can upgrade your uh, Kubernetes cluster to the latest uh, CNCF uh, version of Kubernetes. Uh, so every now and then uh, the, the community comes out with newer edition of Kubernetes uh, and upgrading to the latest edition for a number of newer features is, is something very a common uh, issue. Uh, how do you integrate with the number of different uh, CICD uh, in, uh, options available uh, and open source options available uh, what do you do about container networking and storage uh, so uh, how do you build out that overlay network for kubernetes to run uh, how do you make sure that there is persistent storage available uh, for your kubernetes workloads so a number of these things are uh, there uh, and a number of challenges are there when you are trying to uh, manage your kubernetes cluster yourself so that's where uh, you can say a managed cluster comes into the picture so OKE or container engine for Kubernetes is a managed Kubernetes container service which lets you to deploy and run your own container based applications uh, within the managed service you are able to uh, create a cluster create multiple node pools across availability domains manage those node pools uh, scale up or scale down your uh, worker nodes uh, and also access that cluster using a cube cuttle. So let's take a look at what is managed by uh, the customer and what is managed by uh, the managed service uh, within the OKE within the uh, OKE service. So the gray shaded area uh, designates the functions that are managed by the Kubernetes service. That includes the OCI Kubernetes engine, uh, the master components of the Kubernetes engine, and an Oracle Cloud infra uh, Infrastructure Registry service. Uh, the registry service is a Docker v2 compliant registry service and we'll go a bit deeper into that uh, in one of our next sessions. Within the management plane of Kubernetes, uh, Oracle manages the etcd and the master nodes. So all the master components of uh, Kubernetes uh, and the etcd nodes are managed by uh, Oracle. And we make sure that there are multiple copies of these master components are created across different availability domains. We also manage the uh, dashboard, the Kubernetes dashboard, uh, and things like self-feeding mechanism of the cluster, uh, like the worker nodes as well. On the customer end, uh, you just manage what whatever the worker nodes that you are creating. So uh, within the compute shapes, you can choose any of the compute shapes as your worker nodes. So that can, that can be uh, uh, basically a virtual machine or a bare metal node or even a uh, a, a GPU kind of node because it's also available within uh, the compute shapes so you can choose any of those shapes as your worker hosts and those would be managed by by the customer those are also created within the customer's tenancy 
whereas whatever is in the gray shaded area like the all the master components of the kubernetes are all created and managed within the oracle tenancy all right so let's uh, moving forward within the pricing model what is paid by oracle uh, or what is uh, basically free with the service and what is uh, the customer is paying so the uh, the gray shaded area is basically the managed part of your service is all uh, completely freely available so the registry service and the uh, master and the and the managed service itself is all free and customers are only paying for whatever resources that you are using so when you create a kubernetes cluster uh, with a single node vm for instance you are using a, a one core virtual machine for your uh, for your all your worker nodes like uh, as a worker node and all your containers are running on that particular one core machine so then you are only paying for that one core machine uh, you don't pay anything for the uh, master node that we create uh, and, uh, and you don't pay anything for the registry service or all the management of the registry service as well so you only pay for whatever resources you end up using uh, within your own tenancy uh, the, the the storage or the load balancers that you create or the virtual hosts which you are uh, uh, using as a host for your containers so if we take a look at a high level that where does the container engine for kubernetes and registry service uh, come into play in a in a in a in a high level uh, cloud native development uh, so a developer make some changes in in your in your main code so whether it's available on github uh, or source code uh, the changes then are actually triggers a, a, a pipeline to uh, go through and create an artifact in the form of uh, uh, Docker images. The pipeline can be like the CI/CD system, or the pipelines can be of any like or, or can be uh, an Oracle-based worker uh, pipelines, or it can be any other uh, open-source uh, uh, CI/CD mechanisms as well. So there are a bunch of other CI/CD mechanisms out there. Uh, things like circle CI or Jenkins very common you can have Jenkins and worker integrated with the OKE as well or you can also use uh, uh, the worker uh, pipelines as well so any of those are uh, can be part of uh, the overall cloud native development uh, and from an OKE perspective since it's a vanilla Kubernetes uh, cluster uh, there is no binding is that you have to choose a specific uh, oracle product or any other product uh, it's up to the developers and it's up to the team that whichever makes easier for them and whichever in whichever technology they are much more uh, they have used them and they are much more familiar they can choose uh, choose that as well so you create you use the so the uh, github uh, so the change in your source code basically triggers a ci cd um, uh, pipeline and that actually creates uh, artifacts in the form of your dockerized images those images are then saved into the OCIR registry service the registry service is also uh, within the same region so if your Kubernetes cluster are, are based in Ashburn region the registry service would be also available in the Ashburn so you can uh, save your images in the registry service and utilize those in the same uh, cluster in the same region as well from there onwards the kubernetes engine then can uh, get those images and deploy them across multiple different availability domains now once again from an availability domain perspective the, your worker nodes can be across any availability domain and can be again in the form of a, a virtual machine or a bare metal as well so what are some of the uh, key differentiators for oracle container engine uh, and registry service uh, so it's container native uh, basically are uh, the kubernetes service is a standard kubernetes it's a vanilla kubernetes uh, and uh, as you could see that we we support all the latest uh, versions as well uh, and similarly uh, from a container runtime perspective we are using a standard docker uh, container runtime so as docker and kubernetes is kind of a de facto um, containerized application development uh, platform nowadays so we use a standard docker and kubernetes within the kubernetes engine as well uh, the registry service is a fully docker v2 compliant registry service so any developers who are you know quite uh, familiar with the docker api and the docker commands they can just utilize the same registry service with the same commands as they do normally uh, and it's also integrated with uh, the cloud networking and storage facilities so you can create uh, services within kubernetes and associate the oracle cloud infrastructure load balancing service with your 
service once you want to expose it externally to the uh, to your external customers uh, and similarly if you want to create persistent storage you can utilize the block volume service of OCI and everything is automated so in one of the demos we'll show that how you can create a, a, a persistent volume claim within Kubernetes using the block volume service of OCI it's also developer friendly uh, so you are you can as as we talked earlier that you can use any of the CI CD systems to uh, uh, like uh, push your code and uh, create artifacts in the form of Dockerized images and push them to the registry service so any CI uh, CD framework uh, can work uh, everything is available through console through CLI through API uh, so you can build up your uh, clusters and maintain them using the API and the CLI as well uh, and it's based again on the open standards so there's an open uh, docker based runtime within the virtual host you can directly access those hosts as well when you create the worker nodes within kubernetes uh, through ssh so you can directly ssh to those hosts as well uh, and again on the kubernetes pers perspective it's a standard vanilla kubernetes and it's enterprise ready uh, because it really simplifies the uh, cluster operations for you uh, so you as we saw earlier that there are a bunch of different uh, challenges when you create Kubernetes, when you maintain your kubernetes cluster yourself so the kubernetes managed service uh, simpl simplifies the cluster operations for you uh, you can utilize any of the compute shapes as your worker nodes so you have full bare metal access and you have all the different ships available within virtual hosts with virtual uh, machines as well uh, it's also integrated with the identity and access management service so you can clearly have those granular controls for your for your users so that you can pick and choose that who gets to create the resources within uh, kubernetes and who can create clusters and who can maintain those clusters all of those things can be maintained by uh, the iam policy all right so uh, this gives a high level overview of what the kubernetes managed service is now in the next few slides we'll uh, go over that how you can create a kubernetes cluster within oci what are some of the prerequisites and uh, and when you are creating the cluster what are some of the things that are required when you're creating the cluster so from a, a prerequisite perspective the first thing is that if you have monthly universal credits uh, if your account is on monthly universal credits and then you have automatically a limit of three clusters per OCI region and within each cluster you can create a thousand nodes as well thousand virtual uh, worker nodes if you are on pay as you go or promo accounts currently uh, just uh, contact the support to activate your or increase your limit to create the clusters and the uh, limit per and the total number of nodes would be the same like a thousand nodes uh, per cluster moreover since when you create the kubernetes cluster uh, and when you are creating a node pool within your kubernetes cluster uh, that is your worker nodes those are created in your tenancy so you need to have uh, service limits so you need to have you can say instance quota the compute instance quota so that the kubernetes service can launch uh, the worker nodes across uh, in your in your own tenancy uh, and secondly uh, the the other the next two are optional parameters so if you want to use persistent volumes for your uh, persistent storage for your kubernetes worker hosts you need to have a block volume quota and if you want to create a load balancer for your uh, kubernetes services uh, and you want to create a kubernetes service with the type load balancer then you need to also have a load balancer quota as well all right uh, so on on the IAM policies, uh, you need to yeah, the Kubernetes service to work. You need to have a specific policy in the root compartment of your tenancy. So you need to add a policy by allow service OKE to manage all resources in tenancy. Uh, to launch a Kubernetes cluster, if you are using any user, that user has either to be a part of the admin group or the admin or is part of a group which grants the appropriate container engine permissions as well uh, policies can be created to enable other users as well so one admin can create policies so that uh, that user can only is only able to create uh, or create the uh, clusters kubernetes cluster within your tenancy uh, so just like one of the examples over here 
uh, this is basically allowing a group dev team so all the users in the group dev team are allowed to create a cluster within the tenancy a couple of other notes over here is that when you when you are creating the tenancy you also need to uh, uh, give permissions of vcn read and subnet read on the vcn level on the networking level because uh, when you when the kubernetes service or the user when, when it creates the kubernetes cluster it needs those uh, read level permissions on the networking side as well so what is the basic virtual network config that is required before you create a kubernetes cluster so you need to have an existing vcn uh, and in the next few uh, in the next slide you'll also see that there are a couple of ways that you can create a kubernetes cluster you can have a quick create uh, as well uh, and if you don't want to do a quick create you want to do a custom uh, creation of Kubernetes cluster. In that case, you need to have an existing virtual cloud network. Within that VCN, you need to have an internet gateway, uh, a route table with a default route to the internet gateway, uh, worker node subnets where your Kubernetes worker nodes would be, uh, would be created, load balancer subnets. So when you create a load balancer within Kubernetes, the load balancer will be created in these two subnets. You also need to have separate security lists for Kubernetes worker nodes and the load balancer subnets. The security list for Kubernetes worker nodes should have some specific uh, rules. Uh, so basically, it should allow communication between the worker nodes. So there should be stateless rules allowing the traffic between the worker nodes. It should also allow the traffic uh, on some specific CITRs. Uh, these CIDRs uh, are, are the ones where the Kubernetes master nodes are created and initially they communicate and right now in the current release they communicate to the uh, Kubernetes worker nodes on port 22 when you open up these specific rules. So when you are uh, creating a Kubernetes cluster there are a couple of options uh, to create a cluster so you can either choose a quick cluster creation which basically automatically creates uh, the underlying infrastructure components and uses the default settings for those or you can also do a custom cl custom uh, cluster creation so next we will take a look at what happens when you create a quick cluster so in the case of quick cluster uh, it only asks you the name of the cluster that you want to create the version of your kubernetes cluster so currently it the latest is like 1.11 it asks you what type of version that uh, the kubernetes uh, master should run on uh, and then when you select the quick create it automatically would create the following resources so it would create the virtual cloud network it would create two load balancers for your uh, two load balancer public subnets it would also create three worker node subnets uh, and a security list with required security list rules it would also create a route table with the default gateway to an internet gateway and 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 of course an internet gateway as well then it would give you a choice to choose uh, among the node pool like what is the shape of the virtual machine that you want to create and the quantity per subnet and you can also provide your ssh key in it so it won't ask you what is the image source the image source it would automatically pick it would only ask you that what is the shape of the vm and what is the quantity per subnet for your uh, for 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 your node pool as in addition you can also add uh, kubernetes labels to your node pool so when the node pool uh, comes up and uh, and the kubernetes master will attach labels with the key and value that you uh, provide over here automatically uh, so that later on uh, you can actually enable users to target these uh, specific uh, node pools uh, for your uh, particular application by default, uh, the Kubernetes dashboard and Helm is enabled, uh, and you can also disable them uh, in the quick cluster creation as well. Uh, so this gives you a just a uh, quick snapshot of how the screenshot looks like when you are creating it through the console. So you can see that it asks you the name of the cluster, the version of the cluster. When you do a quick create, it automatically tells you that I'm going to create a new VCN, and the resource would be like one VCN, uh, and then uh, multiple subnets in the node pool section it just 
asks you that what is the shape of your VM, the quantity of your uh, quantity per subnet, and then you can provide the SSH key over here, and then what are the Kubernetes labels. In addition, you can also, uh, like by default, they're enabled. You can disable them by uh, clicking on it here. That's how, uh, and when you do a create for a quick cluster, it then creates a Kubernetes cluster for you. So moving forward, in case of a custom uh, cluster, so in case of a custom cluster, it asks you the name. Uh, you can provide a version of your Kubernetes uh, again, and then you can provide a custom VCN. So there must have to be a VCN that is already created. It doesn't need to be empty. So you can have uh, your other application which is running in your virtual cloud network, and you can create the cluster in that uh, VCN as well. It just uh, requires the name of an existing virtual cloud network uh, where you would want to deploy your Kubernetes clusters. Then it asks you the uh, subnet information. So what is the load balancer subnets uh, and a couple of optional elements that what is the Kubernetes service CIDR block and what is the pods CIDR block. Uh, by default, it would choose a, a, a CIDR automatically, a range automatically. Uh, you can just make sure that when you are that your VCN's uh, range is not the same as your uh, server CIDR block and the pods uh, CIDR range. It also asks you to whether you are providing, whether you are enabling the dashboard and the helm. On the next screen, you'll see that uh, what are, it also then would ask details about the worker nodes. So in the worker nodes, you again provide a name of your node pool the version of Kubernetes to run on each worker node in the node pool. Uh, by default, the version of Kubernetes specified for the master node is selected here. Uh, and the Kubernetes versions on worker nodes must be either the same version as that on the master node or an earlier version that is still compatible. So there can be a difference of uh, two versions, uh, I think a maximum of two versions between the master and the, comp and the worker nodes. So you just need to make sure that whichever version you are selecting is compatible. It then asks you the image source. So the image uh, to be used on the virtual hosts or the bare metal host, like basically your worker nodes. Uh, it gives you the option of either an Oracle Linux uh, 7.5 or a 7.6 uh, in the latest one. Uh, it, uh, so Windows uh, images are not available right now, but they are part of our roadmap. And then you select the shape of your compute uh, compute host. So whether it's a single core, two core, you know, 24 core, or if it's a bare metal, whichever, whatever, whatever the shape of your host is, you provide the subnet that if you want to deploy your worker nodes across the three subnets in one subnet, and then what's the quantity within that subnet. You can also provide uh, your SSH key. Uh, if you provide your SSH key, this actually helps you to directly SSH into your worker nodes. So once your worker nodes are up, you can use the uh, key uh, combination and directly SSH into the worker hosts. You can also again provide the Kubernetes labels. So you can provide a key and value in the key and value format. Uh, when you provide this, this just again helps you to uh, uh, like organize your clusters in a better way. So when you are when you have multiple different worker nodes and you have different node pools within the Kubernetes, you can distinguish those node pools by the different labels that you assign over here. So just to give you a quick uh, snapshot uh, of the customer cluster uh, as well. So in the custom cluster, again, you provide the name, just I, like I have provided a test name of OKE cluster. Uh, it's the latest version that I'm currently creating a Kubernetes version on, and then I, uh, I tell it to create a custom create. When I click on custom create, it then asks me detail on the network site first. So I provide the virtual cloud network, the two subnets for my load balancers, the Kubernetes service CIDR block and the pod CIDR block, I'm just leaving it optional. So it's going to choose the default range over here. And I'm also keeping the additional add-ons enabled. In the node pool uh, section, I am just providing the name, the version, the image source. So it's an Oracle Linux 7.5, the compute shape of that uh, host, and then the three subnets 
for where the worker hosts would be created the quantity in each subnet and then my SSH key over here so I haven't provided any SSH key but I can add the SSH key over here and then provide any of the Kubernetes labels so when I do a label of prod in app A you'll see that when you when the Kubernetes cluster gets created uh, within Kubernetes this node pool all the nodes within this node pool would have a label as app A so once the cluster gets created uh, on the on the main on the main details page of the cluster it gives you the details of the cluster uh, and also the node pools so on the cluster side it tells you that what's the cluster status um, how many node pools it has uh, some details on the cluster ID it also gives details on the versioning the virtual cloud network that you are running uh, and the two ranges of uh, service CIDR and the pod CIDR as well within the node pools it tells you that what are the different nodes which are running within this node pool so all of the node pool has a kubernetes version so of a particular kubernetes version what is the image name how many nodes per subnet total worker nodes uh, and then the worker nodes are shown in the bottom so you can uh, scale your node pools as well so within the node pool uh, screen you can uh, go to actions and then scale and within the scale it gives you the option of uh, scaling the node like total number of uh, nodes within that node pool now one of the important things when you have a kubernetes cluster is that uh, how do you access that cluster and use a uh, kubectl to basically manage the cluster and create your uh, create your uh, containers and pods and carry your applications within the kubernetes cluster so right on the main uh, page where your cluster information is provided uh, within the main page there is a there's a button which gives you the access to the cube config file and the cube config file opens up a dialog box which lets you uh, basically create a cube config for the cluster that you have just created it gives you the exact commands that you can use to create the cube config file and once you have the cube config file you can use that cube config file to directly access the cluster using kubectl once you have the and once you have that access it's then basically you have the you have access to the kubernetes cluster and from there onwards uh, you can just you know manage the cluster and create applications on top of it within their uh, within the within your like main uh, page of kubernetes uh, there's also a getting started uh, area so within the getting started area you can uh, get details or that how do you create how do you open up a kubernetes dashboard so you just need to do uh, run kubectl proxy and then uh, open up the kubernetes dashboard at a particular link provided over here it also gives you a quick uh, uh, like quick start of deploying a sample application within kubernetes uh, and how you can basically test out that your uh, kubernetes cluster is up and running and your sample application is also deployed on it so the dashboard is available uh, once since i had since it gives you the option of creating and installing a dashboard by when you install when you set up the kubernetes cluster uh, so by running the kubectl proxy you can open up the kubernetes dashboard uh, and it basically gives you a lot of details uh, that what is currently running within your kubernetes cluster so you can see that uh, within the within the dashboard there are basically two different uh, areas so it gives you the detail of your infrastructure as well so basically from a kubernetes perspective it gives you the detail that what are your current state of your worker host like what is the cpu utilization of your worker hosts uh, which cpu is better than the, uh, which cpu which which host is uh, less utilized and which is more utilized uh, also on storage and all of those uh, details and and it then also gives you uh, additional detail of uh, kubernetes primitives as well like uh, what are the parts running what type of deployments uh, it's it has uh, what are different services that you have created any of the daemon sets that you have created any replica sets that you have created so all of those kubernetes primitives all those details are also present in the kubernetes dashboard 
So there are two ways you can actually get that information. You can get that either using going through the kubectl uh, and directly accessing the cluster. Uh, and, and you can also have that information in the Kubernetes dashboard. So when you create a Kubernetes cluster, uh, you'll see that if you create a cluster at a, at a previous release and in the meantime, uh, CNCF has come up with the latest release and then the latest release is also supported by the Kubernetes managed service, it would give you an option to upgrade uh, to the latest release. So right over here on your main home page, uh, just besides the delete cluster there would be a uh, an option of upgrading your kubernetes master nodes so the kubernetes master nodes can uh, upgrade uh, and support and they it actually supports an in place upgrade which means that basically it, there won't be any downtime and we'll take care that uh, we'll do a rolling uh, upgrade where all the master components are not down automatically at one moment in fact one by one they are uh, bring brought down and upgraded so we'll do a we the service itself supports an in place uh, upgrade of your kubernetes master nodes once your kubernetes master is uh, upgraded and the second step is to upgrade your kubernetes worker nodes so in case of kubernetes worker nodes uh, we the service itself doesn't support uh, uh, an out an in place uh, or uh, upgrade for the kubernetes worker hosts so that is uh, where the customer or the uh, user has to upgrade your worker nodes themselves. What you can do is that in Kubernetes, you can. there are a couple of options that actually help you to upgrade your Kubernetes master worker nodes. So you can create a, a, a another node pool, a similar node pool to whatever node pool that you have right now, and mark the current node pool in the, in the as drained. So in that case, all of your pods or containers running in those node pools would be migrated to, the, to a different or a, to a new node pool which is on a latest release. And then you can actually migrate, upgrade the current uh, node pool uh, and then bring the pods back similarly. Within the documentation you will see that there is it is documented uh, pretty well and it also gives you a couple of options which help you uh, upgrade your uh, Kubernetes worker nodes. One thing from a service perspective is that it's up to the user to uh, make sure that when you are upgrading your Kubernetes worker hosts, your application will 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 be will not be affected by it. So you need to test out whether your application works with the latest release of the Kubernetes as well. So this actually completes our um, section on Kubernetes. Uh, we went through. Uh, an overview of the Kubernetes service and what are some of the key features uh, of Kubernetes managed service uh, and then we delved a bit deeper into how you actually launch a Kubernetes within OCI, uh, how do you create a quick cluster uh, and how you can create a custom uh, Kubernetes cluster as well uh, and at the end we saw some additional features around management that you can connect to the cluster using kubectl, you can have a Kubernetes dashboard enabled as well uh, and you can also do an in-place upgrade of your Kubernetes master nodes. Thank you for joining everyone and see you next time.